How Andrew made over $66,870 in assignment fees in his first 10 months in wholesaling real estate as a teenager. What is up, guys? Zach in here, and welcome to the Bags Riches podcast. We have Andrew here, and Andrew is going to share exactly how he made $66,870 in his first 10 months wholesaling. He started in January, and uh, he's no fake. He sent me the HUDs. He's shown the proof, and he's ready to do even more deals. So, Andrew, thank you so much for hopping on today. Thank you for having me on, Zach. I appreciate it. Of course, man. So uh, let's break this all down. Let's get from the beginning. What is your wholesaling real estate journey? Like, how did you get started? I got started by actually looking at a, I think it was a YouTube short of you. Um, It was you and Rick together, like on some sort of live talking about all you have to do is go to your county's clerk of the court. It was about a government list. And you were like, you in 60 seconds, you explained how simple wholesaling was. <laughs> and I never thought it was easy, but it was so simple to where it was something that I thought I could stick with. Because I mean, mm-hmm. I've tried, I went down the route of, I never like fully committed to these things, but you know, drop shipping, all the other side hustles you can think of buying and selling stuff from cheap stores and Facebook FBA or uh, Amazon FBA. So wholesaling just seemed so simple, not easy, not easy. <laughs> but super simple, easy to follow. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing, you know, it's, it's simple in the way it is, mm-hmm. but the execution is a lot of hard work, right? Yeah. I mean, just like working out, right. Lift the weights. It's like, okay, but like doing it every day is the hard part. Mm-hmm. And you know, the Amazon FBA, all that stuff, like trust me, as a teenager too, like I saw that stuff. Wholesaling is still the best method, mm-hmm. but it does require the most work. That's why it weeds people out. For sure. Um, so you watch the short, you're, you're probably watching videos. Like what's, how do you get that first deal? Like what's, what was that process like? Uh, the first deal. So I've tried cold calling works really well, but I was not great at it at first, but I went like a week or two cold calling and I'm not going to say I did horrible, but I didn't land any warm, warm leads. And I came, I had a little bit of capital cause I was a, a lifeguard during the summer. And so I lived with my parents. So, you know, I didn't have the, I didn't have any expenses. So I had some money in the savings. And so I saw a video, I think it was Rick talking about the ROS postcards. That's how I got my first, that's how I got my first deal. So I copied everything he said on mailing mastery, everything to the last detail. And I think I, except for, he said, spend at least a thousand. I think I spent like 400 bucks on it. Um, and cause I, I mean, I was, I was nervous. I'm sure you can understand that. I was like, Smith, I've never spent 400 bucks on something that I don't know. It's going to give me a return. And, um, unless it's like shoes or something like that. But besides that, so I spent the money on the direct mail and a week or two later, um, a seller uh, reached back out to me. The offer on the postcard was 116,800, whatever. I ended up negotiating down to 70,500 because the ARV of the house was around 180, 185 at the time. And so it needed probably 30, 35,000 to work. So I was just using, you're probably going to get mad at me here saying here's the 70% rule, right? That's oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the original, this was back in January. All right. Forget about it. It's cheaper real estate though. So mm-hmm. it's different. Right. And uh, I just followed that and uh, sent them. I actually negotiated over text and um, mm-hmm, which is, you're probably going to crack on me for that but i negotiated over text because i was so scared i was so nervous yeah and i ended up landing it got it under contract at seventy thousand five hundred, and found a buyer at eighty seven thousand five hundred. was that 17 grand a little yeah. more 17 come on i, know. I love that man i so yes you know it's better negotiate in person do you still negotiate over text now no no no, no never no it's like that's just no, something was, in the beginning mm-hmm. you between you and me and everyone watching this, you probably could have made 25 if you did it in person, but that's okay. Why not? That's, you spent $8,000 to learn that lesson, but you got the deal. Mm-hmm. Th- th- that's the point. Right. And so just so FYI, what's mailing mastery? It, it, it's our free direct mail course. It's not something Andrew paid $7,000 and we had a coaching call to get him in. And no, it, it's a free course. It's mailingmastery.com right. FYI. But th- that, that's all I'm going to say about that. But $17,000 on that direct mail piece, man, that's, Woo, that's a lot. And did you get any other appointments or motivated sellers like from that? Like what? I, yeah, I had, I had like, let's say I had eight, 10 phone calls back. I had a good bit of phone calls back for only spending 400 bucks. I mean, that's a pretty good amount of, you know, that's a pretty good response yeah. rate. Um, 
half of them were just take me off your list, which is going to happen. Um, and then the other ones were, I'm not going any lower than this offer, or I probably messed up on not just by one thing, but I probably messed up in negotiations. I probably could have landed a, another deal or two, but you know, I went on the appointments and that was just the, the only one I landed was the $17,000 one. I, my first appointment was actually at this house that was worth over 700 grand and the offer was 695. So the RS postcard messed up a little bit and right. she, she wasn't really motivated. She was just like, Oh, he's offering me what my house is worth, worth in cash can close in 30 days, no commissions. So yeah, that one didn't end up working out at all. I needed to get it under contract like less than six. I'm sure you knew that. Oh yeah, I get it. And so everyone just, so the ROS postcards, postcard we developed basically give offers on the postcard and they're not actual offers that the point is they're a little higher than what you should get, but they get a lot of calls. Yes. Here's the problem. Like Andrew knows this where he's at in Maryland, like Northern Maryland, every, like there's seven or eight guys sending postcards out. And when the seller has like eight postcards in their hand, they're just going to go with whoever they call first. Right. But they see your postcard, right? They're going to call Andrew first. Cause like, Oh, Andrew's legit. And that's kind of the point. And I feel like that's kind of why it worked. You spent 400 bucks on regular postcards. Mm-hmm. Kind of bomb. And so you made 17 grand there. So all negotiating over text, did you lock it up over text or email? Like, did you go in person after? Oh, I locked it up over email, sent it to uh, the seller via DocuSign and wow. they signed it within five minutes. The sto- I'll actually give you the story on this. The reason that I kind of got lucky with this mm-hmm. was um, the, the seller was fixing up with his brother unfortunately the brother passed away very unfortunate and he couldn't keep up on the work by himself he didn't speak very good english Mm. so he and he was iffy about hiring people to do it because he's been screwed over in the past by what as many contractors as you can think and so he was just done with it He, he said if he was if it was going at the rate that he was fixing it up it wouldn't have been done for another two and a half years And so it was just smarter for him to offload it and go on to the next one that needed, you know, less work that he can do himself. I get it. I, sometimes things just happen for a reason, man. Like my first two deals, the easiest deals ever. Mm -hmm. There's some other hard deals after that, but that's great. So you got locked up. How do you find specifically the buyer on this one? So I found the buyer off of cold calling the Zillow for rents and I, I got lucky watching a video of yours talking about that because I was not finding any buyers. They were like, I don't, any other buyer I called off of PropStream or there's this, even this thing called the Cash Buyer Database. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, but um, I, I think, think so. Yeah, it's um, it's not worth it too much, but I would call people off that and they just didn't like the area. It was in like um, it was close to downtown of where uh, the deal was. And so people were like, I don't know. Price is fine, but just I don't like investing in that market. And I found a person had a for rent that was on that same street. And I was like, Ooh, this could be pretty promising. Called him up. He looked at it the the very next day, I think, and gave me an offer. That's the only buyer I actually walked through. And uh, (laughs) he ended up offering me that. So, yeah. Wow, man. That's, you know, you just listen to my advice and it works, right? That's the point. Like I've always said this, if their cash buyer owns, a rental, he's going to want to buy rentals nearby. It's just, it makes life so much easier. That's what I do. And so like I reverse engineer how my brain works and that's 17 grand. How did that feel? That first deal? It didn't feel real. Honestly, <laughs> I, it didn't. I, I, when I saw it in my, I was like, no, nah, I wasn't shaking, but I was just in shock because I've never seen, I've never seen five figures in my bank account and <laughs> just seeing 17 and one check was just, it was extraordinary. I couldn't even put it into words. I, in fact, I couldn't put it into words in real life. I didn't even know what to say. I remember at 17, I had $22,000 in my bank account. I'm like, what? That This will last me a lifetime, right? But like, dude, it's an insane feeling. It's, it's. I don't think any teenage, like I know you're a teenager now, but still back then I was a teenager. I, I don't know many teenagers have that, that much money in a bank account. It's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, where is it at now? It's even crazier right. than that. So let's talk about that. First. So you got that first deal. That's great. What do you do after? Obviously, a little celebration, but like, yeah. what do you do after you get back to work? You get right back to work. Actually, right after that, I uh, went driving for dollars, and I found my second deal. And so I was only, I'm only doing, I was only doing wholesaling, and so you're gonna probably scream at me for this. After I got my first deal, I actually got pretty lazy, mm-hmm. and yeah. so um, it was. I closed it in January 30th, 
Um, but I got the check on February 1st or 2nd. So January 30th, I didn't close another deal till April 11th. So wow. it's, it's three months, correct? But that, that's, that's on me. I took a, um, I took a short, I didn't spend a, like all my money, but I, I took a vacation to Florida. I was, uh, I did everything you weren't supposed to do. All right. I listened yeah. to you. I listened to you on getting the deal. I didn't listen to your advice on after I get the deal. That's fine. It, it, it ended up working out, mm -hmm. but I think it's important having on there that like no one's perfect. I, sometimes you deserve it. I, mm -hmm. I ain't going to clown you on that because you just kept working on it. And I, it always ends up at the end. I mean, you're, you're, you're young. You're, you're fine on this, right? But like, man, it, 17 grand first month and then you wait till April. So driving for dollars, right? Yeah, it, I was driving for dollars. And uh, it was this house in the, I'm sure you know this. I didn't know this until, until I actually closed the deal. The historical district is super, super strict on what you could do for rehab, right? Yeah. And so I estimated this home's rehab to be right around $30,000, right? And it, I thought it was going to make a killer deal. I thought it was going to make a $30,000 fee. Um, I ended up only making a $6,270 because the house actually needed over $90,000 worth of work because the city required you to use specific things for the the porch or the um, the beams to hold the house up and the deck and everything. So um, I guess I should have been aware of that, but I still ended up making it work. But I actually, I didn't make... So from January, when I closed that deal, I didn't make another phone call till probably, probably like mid to late March. And so that's when I called the driving for dollar lead. Wow. Okay. And so... So wait, how much was it exactly on the assignment? The second one? Yeah. 6,270. 6,270. So you call them. What script are you using when you're calling these? Just do just, just the normal script saying, hey, this is, An hey, this is Andrew. Um, I got I got Hold on. Did I change up my script? Not, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have a specific script property. And I'm just curious, are you interested in selling that property? And they uh, either would say, you know, yes or no. And he's ended up saying yes. And he said, can we continue this conversation over text? Which we did. We continued it over text. I'm not sure why, um, but we did. And that was another um, deal I kind of closed over text. <laughs> and uh, so the first deal, two deals, I guess I technically closed over text, but it wasn't text blasting. You know, they were yeah. direct mail and driving for dollars. Okay. And then how did you find the buyer for this one? Found the buyer for this one. This one was this one was tough. This one was like I tell you, the, the second deal was the worst deal I've done. It was and it was the second to least amount I've made. Um, I actually had to JV on this one, so because I couldn't find a buyer, no one because everyone I was wondering what was going on, but you they uh, all the buyers knew that you needed to have special equipment for the historical district to rehab the house. And so I'm like, dude, it only needs like 30 grand worth of work. You know, fix the porch and you know, put new flooring inside. It's good to go. Uh, that wasn't the case. And so I had to JV with someone who knew that they did deal in the historical district and ended up um, the reason it was so low is actually supposed to be 10,000, 10,000. So a $20,000 deal in total. Yeah. But I had to pay the seller's back mortgage, so, which was like 5,800 or 700, whatever. Um, and the other wholesaler didn't want to chip in so i was like well better close it hey at least you jv you got it done mm -hmm. and honestly it's better than nothing right yeah so now you got the second deal We're kind of getting back into it april now mm -hmm. uh, what's going on what's going on after that because you started doing a little better too mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm getting there so and then right around right around june i closed the third deal and i'm, I'm, I'm only doing this like one to two days a week i'm not like all, all in doing this wholesale. What are you thing. doing? Are you doing school, work? You, I was lazy. That's what I was. <laughs> I was. I was lazy. I was lazy, and I was the phone. I hated the phone calls. I still yeah. to this day I don't like the phone calls, but I gotta just you know suck it up and keep going. But that that shows you that me working one to two days a week, making almost seventy grand in ten months. Like I just wish I would have imagined. I'm I'm full time now. Like yeah, I, yeah from September to now, I'm I'm full time. Which and I closed. Twenty thousand dollars my first month being full time. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's but, the difference, man. That, that that's, but not lazy. It's just I, I. You just have to mentally get to that point where you realize it, right? And maybe it takes some time. It, it's yeah. fine. But okay, so 
Third, well, so the third deal, you're getting a little lazy, one to two deals. Where are the other deals coming in now from there? So the third deal came in from government list cold calling. Um, I pulled a list of, uh, it was tall grass. There were a bunch of these codes on them. I didn't understand what they were. Uh, I just pulled all the code violations because I, I didn't want to keep going back and forth. But I know I had tall grass, water shutoffs, um, and I guess any other ones in there. Some of them were just parking violations, though. So yeah, um, like you're parked on the meter outside the house and um, or you're parked on the sidewalk in code violation. And I was like, OK, but there was only and they only gave me a list of like 89 or 90. And I ended up pulling a deal from that. Wow. Which was pretty crazy. Um, and it was like, and it was honestly, it was the like 60th phone, 60th phone call I made. And he was just done with it. He uh, inherited the property too. So it was a probate and it was a tall grass violation. So I put it under contract at 100. Well, actually, I put it under contract at 102, but I, had, I wanted to negotiate down to 100, which I did. Got it down to 100. Found a buyer at eight, uh, 108, 500. And uh, that deal closed in like 27 days, 28 days. Mm -hmm. Straight from a government list. Yeah. How do you find the buyer on this one? I found, I found the buyer on this one from Zillow for rents. That's where I found most of my buyers. I have a list of a bunch of buyers in my phone and 80% of them are from the Zillow for rents. There's because so, of a, a for rent in where I am, this is a heavy landlord market. There's like a new for oh, yeah. rent Zillow every three, four days. So I'm like, let's give them a call. Oh yeah. I, we're, we're at Maryland. It's, it's money. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I've told everyone about your market, right. You know, kind of no, North, no, North of like DC. It's like, it's beautiful. Right. And it so it's like, Everyone in the DMV, like, why are you wholesaling there? Just go to, like, some of the suburbs are a lot cheaper with a bigger population. But that's any market, right? And, and so, like, a high population, low ARVs, you're good to go. Yeah. And so, started doing better from there. And then you started really scaling up from there, right? Like, what, what happened yeah. after that third deal? After that third deal, I was like, all right, this is – I'm tired of these, you know, four-figure deer deals. It's time for me to really kick it into high gear. And that deal closed on June or July. Ju that deal closed in, on like July. I can't remember exactly. June or July. All right, June or July. Mm -hmm. My next deal I closed um, early August, I believe. It was fifteen thousand one hundred dollars, and that was from <clears throat> that was from cold calling. And um, I just so I knew that my area very. Well. I live in my market, so I took it street by street. I went on batch leads, and I made a circle boundary around you know where I kind of live. Cause I know there's a bunch of distressed properties in this close to downtown area, not quite downtown, but just a little bit over. That's where I like to, that's where I like to be. And a lot of the houses are ugly beat up. And so it's kind of like a driving for dollars, but also like a, just a regular cold calling. And I called them and apparently the, the agent was actually on the number for the, um, this was an off market deal, but they were going to list it on the market. I ended up talking to the agent for that house that they were going to list it. They were going to list it at 79, uh, 79,900 or 7990. And um, I was lucky I got in contact with them first. And uh, I went to the house, saw it, put on a contract exactly what they wanted because if I would have went any lower, they were going to wait. And I was like, I'm not going to risk waiting. So I put on a contract at 79,9, found a buyer for 15,001 or not, not 15,100. I found a buyer at 95 flat which was assignment fee of 15,100. Yeah. Man, from an agent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. I, that's a good amount though. Hey, like you're, you're getting some momentum there. And so eventually you keep going until you hit that, what, that $20,000 a month, right? Yeah. And you start adding some that was all right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So September, I was like, you know what? Direct mail. I spent $400 and I made 17 grand the first time. Why don't I just you know, spend more. So and then I spent around 1100 or $1,200 on direct mail and I landed an $18,000 deal and a $2,000 deal. So, you know, $20,000 the, in the month of September. My gosh. And that, that was last month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And yeah. so, man, I, I, it's, it's insane your journey because like, if you, I'm not clowning you, but I'm just saying, like, if you spent a thousand dollars a month between those months in direct mail, imagine what could have happened. I, dude, I, I think about it all the time now, and that's why I, that's why I asked you on the last uh, the last live you did. I was like, I spent four hundred dollars and I spent twelve hundred dollars on postcards. So combined of what is that eighteen sixteen hundred bucks on postcards, and I've made what is that thirty seven thousand dollars 
like what's the ROI on that? I might as well. And I asked mm-hmm. you, should I spend, you know, like four grand on direct mail? And you were like, what do you think? Like, I, okay, yeah. You, the problem is, you know, the answer. Mm-hmm. It's like, are you asking for permission? Or do you, do you think Zach is going to say, no, you made too much money. Don't do it. Like obviously. Yeah. Right. And, but, but the, the thing is, it's like, you have this pipeline and you should obviously go after it and try it out. But like, you still, you took away from direct mail, you stopped what was working, but you still yeah. found success with that. That's amazing. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable your journey there. And so like, I, I truly feel like, and this is not a bad thing. You kind of like are stumbling your way this first year. Like you made a lot of mistakes. Oh yeah. But just imagine, you know, you've kind of stopped the mistakes September and just you saw a huge spike. Mm-hmm. Imagine what happens. You just clean up all those mistakes and just, it, and that's the exciting part, right? Because like you can do even crazier, better stuff. And, and like, that's what I found my first year in wholesaling stumbled mistakes. Year two cleaned it up and I didn't, I didn't work even more. I just cleaned it up and just make more money. And yeah. that's why I think it's so cool having you on early on in your journey, because it's exciting to have you on next year, the year after that, and just yeah. seeing the growth of that and for you to do more deals. But you're doing well, man. This is super exciting and awesome. Uh, but you've definitely gone through your fair amount of struggles. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a lot of people, you know, I, I want to ask, because there's a lot of teenagers watching. So someone, I made six figures at 17, 18, mm-hmm. always 19 years old, right? You're 19. Do you ever get some issues or flack for your age when talking to sellers? Honestly, not. The only time I've ever been asked what my age was, was on like one deal. And they were like, wow, that's so cool. You're getting in, you're getting into this early. And I, that is, I thought like, just like anyone else, I guess, when they were, when they were you know younger, 17, 18, getting started, um, I thought that I was going to be, you know, clown for my age or not um, trusted for my age. Cause I'm only brand new, but I was just honest with them, you know, just, Hey, I didn't say this is my first deal. I wasn't, you know, up and everywhere. But I, um, I said, hey, yeah, I'm getting my foot in the door. Um, I've always loved real estate ever since I was a kid. My grandparents were flippers back in like, you know, the early 2000s, which they were. And so I'm just following after their footsteps. They had great success and I want to, you know, follow the same footsteps. So really age didn't, my age didn't affect it at all. If anything, I guess it kind of helped. And, and you've a lot of confidence talking. And mm-hmm. that's something I can see. You've, you've put the time in, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you didn't put hours and hours and like 15 hours a day into it, but like that, that's not what it takes. Like you don't need to do that. Like I did starting, like if you just consistently every week, just put some work into talking to sellers and you, you haven't even been a year into it and you sound yeah. great with that. You just sound great talking. Yeah. They just, it just, it's not that much. It's just, if you just put that time in consistently, mm-hmm. you'll do well. And so what can you tell people when it comes to talking to the seller, like for your process, somebody gives you a direct mail call in, you do the appointment. What's kind of your flow of getting that deal done? I, well, the flow, there wasn't really a flow until like my third deal. Like I was, you know, stumbling on my words a little bit, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta keep doing it. Um, I know that sounds you know cliche and you've said it hundreds of times and you just gotta keep talking to people. You just gotta keep getting out there talking on the phone, get comfortable talking on the phone. I'm, I'm comfortable. I've been comfortable talking on the phone. I just don't like it. It's just, <laughs> I'm sure no, no one likes it. You know, no one likes going to their job or no one likes making the calls, but it's, it's, you just got to get better at it. Repetition. You know, it's not like, it's like going up to bench press, you know, you're not going to bench press 225 your first time, you know, you got to keep getting reps in, keep going, keep pushing. And then eventually, you know, you'll be, you'll be pretty good. That's the point, man. And you keep going. And so, when, when you're talking to the seller now, I want to hear kind of what your appointment view is like, right? There's, there's, there's sort of a flow. I know there's no flow, but there's a flow. You mm-hmm. say hello and you kind of get into it to the closing. Uh, what is that like? Like, I mean, let me ask you this. What's your closing line? So we're talking to the seller. You, get, you kind of get into that closing. They have an ROS postcard in mind, which uh-huh. obviously you're not going to do. How do you kind of flip the script on that? So the closing is, um, well, I use good cop, bad cop. And my favorite one, the one I've used for the past three, well, the past two deals on the postcards was if I go over there and give you a price, are you ready to make a yes or no decision today? And they'll, I've never heard no. Then again, I've only done six deals, but they'll say, yes, I'll make I'll give you a yes or no decision today. And wow. so, and um, so I'll go there in person. This is when I nego- talk in person, you know, mm-hmm. like I can, I'll, I've negotiated over the phone and over text, text is, 
and I got lucky. And Texas has got to be by far the worst. It's less personal. They'll take you less serious. They can take their time to respond. Phone calls a little better, but in person is like really where it gets them. And so I talked to him in person. And um, really, the the close kind of comes with the rapport that I built in the beginning, like being personal, making them laugh, making them feel comfortable, like I trust them. Well, how do you build that rapport? You build just so whenever I went to, so I'll break down the $18,000 deal. So I put this under contract at $142,000. I think the offer on the, on the postcard was like one sixty five. dollars You know, not that too big of a difference, but... I said, are you ready to make a yes or no decision? So let me break down on, on the phone. So he called me and um, we're getting through the conversation. I'm, building, I'm not building too much rapport over the phone. I'm just trying to get a little bit of details. And he says, I see the under the offer, it says contingent on um, inspection or the inside of the property. And I said, yes, for sure. And if I go there, if I when we set this appointment, are you ready to make a yes or no decision after I see the place and give you a price. And he said, yes. And so the rapport building really came when I went into the house and talked to him and his tenants because his tenants were his family. And so that was one of the reasons of his motivation. His motivation was that he tried to sell the property to another bigger investor that actually offered him more than, well, actually a lot more than what I offered him, but they wanted to kick the tenants out. Um, Cause it was, it was, there was so much equity in that house that whoever was going to buy was going to flip, put, you know, 10 grand into it, flip it, you know, the next day. And so I found a buyer that was willing to wait, but I said, yeah, we can, you know, keep the tenants. I was talking to the tenants about their jobs and how one of them woke up at like 3 a.m. And I wake up pretty early. So I wake up at five or four, not 3 a.m. That's pretty early. And so we were like going back and forth on uh, who's more mentally stronger, just, having fun games with it. Just, just having fun with the tenants. I can't remember exactly what I said, but having fun with the tenants, making everyone laugh. Um, he had a car shop. I don't know anything about cars, but I know my grandfather loves them. I put my grandfather on FaceTime and they were showing all the, the, the old Mustangs and the, you know, the, the land yachts of old classic cars, just making them feel like I'm a person and not a salesman. If that yeah. makes sense. That's beautiful, man. And like, I think a lot of people struggle because I, I truly believe people our age, you know, and I'm older than you for five years, but like 19 and 20 year olds, they don't talk to people outside their family. That's mm -hmm. like 55, 60 years old. They don't mm -hmm. no conversation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to relate to them because they just don't do it. And they're regular people. They were 19 year olds one day too. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. If you're a dude, a 60 year old man, they, we both have pretty common interests. We like fast cars. We like hunting, fishing, sports, like, the, there's commonalities and heck if you're a 19 year old female with a 60 year old guy you can just talk about the house still mm -hmm. talk about cars be cool whatever the seller likes be that rapport piece don't feel like oh we're, we're so different if you really truly feel like that like you're not going to build a rapport and I, I like how you found a way for it and that really is the extra step to really mm -hmm. get these deals that no one talks about mm -hmm. in, in fact my uh my last deal i closed it was the smallest one the two thousand dollar one but Together, 18 and 2, that equal 20. So yeah. that feels pretty good. Still pay uh, for the direct mail. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's more, that's, yeah, that's more than what I pay for direct mail. And um, so talking to him, he said the only reason he went with me was because I, remind, I, I reminded him of, some, of someone at his church that he really trusted and liked. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but I guess I had a, this house was only 540 square feet and I still squeezed the deal out. He went at 70. I ended up putting it under contract at 25 and wow. um, because the ARV was right around 80, but it was a quick flip, you know, someone a buyer would be in there, you know, done their thing. But I was talking to him in this house for a hundred minutes, about an hour, hour and a half of not even the house, just talking about things, you know, just communicating and trying to build as much rapport as I can, continuing the conversation, just making it seem, I kind of, honestly, I got lost in thought. Like I forgot I'm here to do business. I forgot I'm here to make a deal. And so yeah. I ended up making him, I guess, trust me and feel good. And we uh, ended up closing a deal. I love it, man. Like I tell every 18, 19 year old getting into wholesaling. And it's a weird thing to say. Cause I know you, you go to the gym, you work out, selling your profile thing. If you can just go up to like a 55 year old person, six year old person at the gym, and just strike up a conversation. I know it seems stupid, but if you can get good at doing that with a seller, you're even way better.
Mm-hmm. You just got to sure. learn how to go from like dry to like find an interest. Hey, I like your shoes. Mm-hmm. Boom. Just you go into just little stuff like that to build rapport. I know it seems stupid, but stuff like that's like, oh, you remind me of someone in personal. I'll go with you. Yeah. In a market like where you're at, where there's so many wholesalers, mm-hmm. there's so many deals, you have to get that edge. Mm-hmm. And like, it's not how much money you spend. And I always say it's not how much money. It's how cool of a person you are to the seller and how nice and to go with you or not. Yeah. And man, I love it, dude. Yeah, You're driven. You're going well. Where are you looking to go for in the future here, right? I mean, you just went from so like basically 70 grand, 10 months, but basically 20 of that was just in one month because yeah. you're getting more serious. Where are you looking to go in the future here? So the next, the next, um, I guess two and a half months, it'd be October. Yeah, yeah. The next two and a half months, I, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to the ROS postcards and niche, niching that list up better than I've ever had before and making it, you know, a little, little broader. I want to get into another market, but not just yet. I might wait till like, I'm, I'm going to wait a little bit down the road because this market's doing really well, especially after me only being, you know, not working more than, you know, two days a week on it. So I'm going to up, up the marketing. I've actually spent money on a cold caller once, which I don't want to say it was a mistake. Maybe I didn't do something correct, but if I would have spent that same money on a direct mail, I would have made, you know, I've seen it 17 grand. So wasn't, what wasn't quite worth it yet. I I'm not looking to hire anyone just yet. I'm still, um, I still got to get good at it myself because I don't want to hire someone to do something that I'm not great at myself. Just yeah. yet. So I'm going to do the postcard, stick with what's been working and just see where that takes me. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see what we're going to do in 2024. Love it, man. Well, Andrew, if somebody's got a wholesaling deal in the uh, Frederick uh, area, Prince George's County or anything north of that, mm-hmm. um, this is your handle on Instagram. Go hit him up. I will personally vouch he the HUDs he sent me are legit. So uh, he's got some buyers. So yeah. uh, if you want to JV with him, help him get to over $100,000 his first year. Yes. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, JV with him uh, below. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. What, what markets are you looking specifically for if someone's got any deals? Um, I have buyers in yeah, Frederick County, Frederick, the whole Frederick County, but the city of Frederick, um, Hagerstown, Maryland, um, Martinsburg, West Virginia, kind of that whole p- people who are in the area. The uh, I There's this um, highway, it's called 81. I It's like I-81, that whole, there's like a circle of Martinsburg, Winchester, um, Bunkers Hill and uh, Spring Mills in West Virginia. And so, and then in Maryland, it's Hagerstown, Frederick. There's a couple other, no- Northern Maryland and um, West Virginia. That's where I am. Awesome. Well, if you got a deal, send it him there. Andrew, I can't wait to see what your results are going to be like next year. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, dude, I appreciate it, man. Don't stop marketing. And he got this. Uh, do you have any parting thoughts to the audience for everybody watching right now before we head out? For sure. Um, those of you struggling to get your first deal, I mean, just we, we hear all the time. Just keep going. When you do get the first deal, please don't make the same mistake I did and just go. You, you celebrate, celebrate, you know, do, do, do your thing, but get right back into it. Don't wait, you know, two, three months before you start getting on the phones again, because it goes quicker than you think when you're having fun with it. But I mean, other than that, just keep pushing, keep grinding. And yeah. I believe in you. Zach believes in you and just continue the journey. All right. Keep it up guys. Thank you so much. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe. 